Hello and welcome to our discussion on anemometry. Uh, we are now into wind speed measurement and we're looking at different types of speed sensors. This PowerPoint presentation is going to cover the sonic anemometer. And sonic has nothing to do with hedgehogs or drive-ins. Here, when we use the term sonic, we're talking about sound, sound waves, or acoustic waves. So basically, a sonic anemometer is one that measures wind and wind components by figuring out how long it takes sound to travel from a known path, across a known path from one sensor or transmitter to another, and then doing that in a, uh, at, at different angles to triangulate and figure out the two-dimensional nature of the wind. So, as you know, uh, sound is an acoustic wave, and that acoustic wave is longitudinal. It's traveling through the air, and of course, the air is moving. So, because the medium that the sound wave is traveling through is also moving, then if we know the speed of sound, we can figure out the wind speed by subtracting the sound speed out of the time that it takes to get from one place to another. That sounds kind of complicated. But basically, this is how it works. These are actually ultrasonic uh, wind sensors. And they measure the, the time that it takes for sound wave or ultrasonic wave to travel from one point to another. And of course, that depends upon the wind speed. Uh, the diagram there shows that it travels two different directions, and you can figure out uh, the difference in the winds, uh, the difference in the time that it takes. Based on that, you can actually figure out the wind. So the way a sonic anemometer works is that it sends a pulse, um, in other words, a sound wave in one direction, and then that's received by, of course, a receiver, and then over the same path, it sends a pulse back. And, you know, if there is wind, then it's going to take longer to get uh, to the receiver in one direction than it is in the other direction. So there is a microprocessor that can figure out the wind speed based upon uh, the transient times. Instead of just going back and forth between um, along one path, they may use more than one path. Um, typically, it's three or actually four paths to figure out um, the wind speed and wind direction. So um, doing that, looking at the three, at least with this type of anemometer, this particular anemometer, they have three sensors. And from that, um, they can triangulate the wind vector based on the transient times going out to each one of those sensors. So it's kind of hard to explain, but here is a video that hopefully uh, can do a better job than I can. The wind sonic range, professional quality, solid state ultrasonic wind sensors for use in marine, meteorological, environmental and industrial applications. Wind sonic sensors use ultrasonic wind speed measurement technology to measure wind speed up to 60 meters per second with a low startup speed and a full 360 degrees of wind direction with no dead band. Features include an aerodynamic profile for minimal interference with airflow and multiple output options including an instrument health status code. Winsonic has a lightweight, robust and corrosion-free polycarbonate exterior and is capable of operating in a wide range of environmental conditions. Winsonic M has an impact-resistant, hard-anodized aluminium alloy construction. An optional de-icing heating system is available, allowing the sensor to operate in temperatures down to minus 40 degrees C. Unlike mechanical propeller and cup and vane wind sensors, wind sonic sensors have no moving parts to wear out or fail, making them ideal for harsh environments and in restricted access applications requiring minimal maintenance. Windsonic sensors use the ultrasonic time of flight principle to ascertain wind speed and direction. Opposing sets of transducers alternately send and receive ultrasonic pulses to each other. In still air, these pulses travel at the same speed. 
The wind speed affects the send-receive pattern of the pulses. Pulses in the direction of air movement will reach the opposing transducer more rapidly, whilst pulses into the wind will be delayed. The stronger the prevailing wind, the more prominent the effect will be. With more than 25 years' experience, Gill ultrasonic technology is extremely reliable and used in a wide range of applications and environments. The Windsonic Range High quality, robust wind sensors Reliable, solid state ultrasonic technology Outputs include a health status code Full 360 degrees of wind direction measurement De-icing option on the Windsonic M NMEA output option Low power options are available For more information, please contact us by phone or visit the Gill Instruments website. So that's ex an explanation of how the sonic anemometer works, as well as an advertisement for So um, here's the math. If you want to deal with the math, um, it shows that the time difference uh, between the initial transmission across the air and its reception is, of course, a function of the airspeed. So getting different times gives you different wind speeds, and from that you can triangulate. Sonic anemometers were first developed back in the 1970s, um, and they have very good spatial resolution, typically uh, on the order of 20 to uh, uh, 10 to 20 centimeters. Very good temporal resolution uh, as far as um, uh, you know, getting uh, observations probably about 20 times per second. So they can be used for turbulence measure. Um, sonic anemometers can measure three-dimensional wind. We saw only two-dimensional, in other words, um, the wind east, west, north, south. But also, um, since they are uh, very, they have very good spatial resolution. They can also measure the vertical wind speed or w. So some pluses uh, for the sonic anemometer, there's no moving parts. So these are great for automated weather stations. Uh, a minus is that um, uh, some of the structure around the sonic anemometer disrupts the airflow. So that needs to be uh, worked out. Uh, they put it typically put it in a wind tunnel and figure out the, uh, the errors and then they uh, include that. Uh, with the microprocessor, a little bit of logic that if the wind is a certain speed in a certain direction to correct it for that much. So, so to summarize, the advantages are, of course, a very short time or distant constant, uh, no moving parts, and these heads are typically heated so that you have uh, ice-free uh, wind measurements which was a problem with the cup anemometers. They would fill up with uh, snow and ice and degrade the wind. One disadvantage to sonic anemometer is birds. This was uh, discovered by the National Weather Service uh, when they were implementing the uh, transition over from cup to sonic anemometers. And this is the solution. What they do is they put spikes on the anemometer sensors, uh, the legs, to keep birds off them. In particular, Grand Forks, there's an owl that loves to sit uh, on the sonic anemometer for the center field wind uh, at uh, the airport. So they actually had to put these. And I've got some pictures if you'd like to see. I can show those to you or send those to you. As I mentioned, the National Weather Service transi transitioned over in 2005 to sonic anemometers. They use a Vaisla 425 National Weather Service ice-free wind sensor. And this is standard on all ASOSs across the United States. Um, the Vaisla 425 ice-free wind sensor has a range of 0 to 1, 125 knots, threshold wind speed of 0, resolution down to one-tenth of a knot, and an accuracy of about a quarter of a knot. And that concludes our discussion of sonic anemometers.